I'm happy to welcome you to one more session to, uh, of the ICTP MAP Associate Seminar. Today, our speaker is Kalim Barr, and he's talking about close geodesics on surfaces without printed points. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Alex Alejandra. So, I'm very happy to speak in this seminar for the first time. So, I'm not very very knowledgeable about this technology, but I will try to do my best. So I'll be writing live as I'm speaking. So we'll be talking about closed geodesics on surfaces without conjugate points. Basically, we are interested in counting closed geodesics, as you see in the abstract, the Margulis estimate, that's what we look over. So uh, during this talk, I will have M, G, where M here, this is a surface, this is a two-dimensional closed manifold. Closed manifold, and G is a Riemannian metric. So we all know what geodesics are. Geodesics are just shortest path that join points, like shortest path joining points the manifold and so geodesics shortest path so shortest with respect to the Riemannian metric that is given joining points so okay so I'm assuming that this is just very standard and then we are, we are now interested in closed geodesics. So the geodesic C, so we can think of a geodesic that is parameterized from the whole real line to the manifold is closed. If there exists a time T says that I mean, naturally you have C, T plus T equals C, T for all T in R. So in here, I would be interested in counting closed geodesics and I'm interested in doing this counting in, a, in the setting of non-conjugate points, which is a, quite general, like uh, more general than negative curvature, more general than non-positive curvature. But to count these closed geodesics, there is a problem that we are facing that sometimes you might have, for instance, if you, if you, if you look at this picture, where here you have a surface of genius two, where here you have curvature, the curvature here is negative. Here you have a, a flat, is curvature zero and here you have curvature negative again. So you see that here you might have like countably many closed geodesics here. All these are closed geodesics. So to do this counting, we want to count all these geodesic as one. So in that sense, we, we, we would be counting free homotopy classes because all these closed geodesics are free homotopic. So So, okay. so we do not for T. For T positive. So let BT be the number. of free homotopy classes with a geodesic of lengths at least t with a closed geodesic sorry
of lines less or equal to t. So the length of the closed geodesics is actually in the previous slides is the shortest time so that that equality holds. So that's just the, the period or the length. So, so we will be interested in doing this counting. So there is a fact that uh, uh, it is very well known that every free homotopy class contains at least one closed geodesic. In negative curvature, we know that it has only one closed geodesics, but as I said in the previous slides, in this flat, in this flat bit, you have all these geodesics that are that are free homotopic. So one free homotopy class can have multiple closed geodesics. Okay. So there is this very old result. For for instance, in this setting of surfaces, when the curvature, when the curvature is just constant minus one for k equals negative one. So there is this very well known, very like standard results of Haber. This was in the 1959 that you have this number of closed geodesics is just asymptotic to so you have P T is just of order of E T over T. This is also called a prime geodesic theorem in some by some people. So so our result is going along. So there are more results that I will I will about this that I will I will list later. So our result is more about we will first try to relax I mean the curvature assumption, and then also yeah. So the curvature assumption we we relax it by this what we call no conjugate points. So I will just recall the definition point here. No conjugate points. So if you if you're given a geodesic, so given a geodesic C this from R to M if you have a vector field along this along this geodesic, so a vector field J along this vector field defined from R to T C M. So this is just to say this is along along the geodesic C is a Jacobi field. If it satisfies this nice equation, which is J double prime T plus K. C of T, J of T equals zero. Oops, oops, that's not what I want to show. Equals zero. So this is a vector field that satisfies this is called a Jacobi, a Jacobi field. And now two points on this geodesics are conjugate. If there is a non-vanishing vector field, a non-vanishing Jacobi field that vanishes at one point at, at, the, at the other point. So two points, CT1 and CT2 are conjugate. If there exists J, which is a Jacobi field on C, so Jacobi field, I will just write it like that, so that we have J at T1 equals J at T2 equals zero, but J prime at T1 is non zero. 
like uh, it's not identically zero and j prime at t1 is different from zero say so no having conjugate points is just that definition and you can see that if you have a negative curvature for instance from the equation so if you have a the curvature is negative you see that non uh, the jacobi field they grow exponentially from this from this simple equation so you have exponential growth of jacobi field so you don't you cannot have jacobi field that vanish at two points of jacobi fields and then then no conjugate points Similarly, also if you have a non-positive curvature, also from the from the equation, you can you can see that you cannot have a Jacobi field that is vanishing twice along the same geodesics. So this is just saying the picture you would have is if you have this is your geodesic, and then this is CT1, this is CT2. You have the Jacobi field that is vanishing here but not identically zero it's growing and start decaying to get zero so these two points will be will be conjugate and this uh, notion of conjugacy it has to do actually with uh, you know the geodesics being minimal in the universal cover for instance if 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 you don't have conjugate points you can prove that the, the geodesics are minimal in the universal cover by using the, the the there is a there is a nice formulation of jacobi fields by the exponential map and then you can see that it is it is equivalent to say that you have uh, geodesics are globally minimizing in the universal cover which is which is quite general so the theorem our, our theorem says that So as I said in the title, this is joined with Klimanaga and Tom and, 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 and Knipper. Gerhard Knipper and myself. So our results it just it just gives the the generalization of of the results I said I said before the Haber results the one in the 1951. So let M G be a closed surface without conjugate points. and of genus at least two so this is because you we, we're just trying to avoid the, the torus the flat torus of at least two then we have the following asymptotic estimate so say that the limit when t goes to infinity of the number of homotopic classes, free homotopic classes, is just as you would expect. Oops, so I should use, uh, uh, I'm using here T, HT over HT. Here H is the topological entropy of the geodesic flow. H is a topological entropy. So I will not define it so, but uh, topological entropy of the geodesic flow. So this is the main result we prove here. So it said that if you have a surface without conjugate points of genus at least two, you have, oops, I did not write the limit equals something. 
actually write equals one. Okay, so actually I want to discuss actually, you know, three different type of, of, of asymptotic bound that people have studied. So there is, So we have three different bounds that are studied here. One is, we call it the exponential growth. So this is just that the limit when t goes to infinity of one over t log of Pt equals the topological entropy. So this is one bound, let's call this EG exponential growth. There is another bound, which is a little stronger, which is a uniform bound. The uniform bound says that you have Pt is bounded by b over t okay um sorry but i think i need to switch to little t because i think that's what i'm used to doing instead of using capital t so b over t exponential of ht and here a over t exponential of ht so you see that this bound, it, it, it implies, it is it's a little stronger than the exponential growth. So uh, the uniform bound, let's call it UB. And uh, the last one, the one we prove in the theorem, which is, uh, we, call, we call it the multiplicative asymptote. Asymptotics which is just to prove that, uh, to improve the bound in UB that this constant A and B, they can be optimal, that when T goes to, when T goes to infinity, they, co they converge to one. So this is limit when T goes to infinity of P T over E H T over H T, this is one. So as I said here, so these three bounds, this last one, the multiplicative assumption is easy to see that it implies UB, which implies EG, sorry. So let's call this MA. As I said, before I, 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 I go to discuss the main, like some, points in the proofs, I, would, I want just to, to, to tell you a little bit about the history, like what was done in this, in this subject before. So as I said before earlier, there is a result of Haber in 1959, which was for surfaces and covered is constant minus one and for surfaces, okay? So this proves MA. And here, curvature minus one gives you that the topological entropy is one, and that's why in the formula, the H was one in the, in the formula I wrote before for these results. So, and this uses the, 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 this uses the cell back stress formula uh, that, is, that relates the, the spectrum of the Laplacian to the length spectrum. The length spectrum is just, it, it gives you the information about the length of the closed geodesics. And there is a nice formula, the Selberg test formula that uh, that gives you this relation, and uh, yeah. So, uh, and this uh, this is uh, something that you have in surfaces for surfaces in constant curvature minus one. And later there is a result by Sinai in sixty six. This proves the uniform bound, okay? The uniform bound that I have above. So this proves UB 
for variable curvature, but still negative curvature and bounded above and below by some, cause some negative constant. So variable negative curvature. And any dimension, this doesn't have restriction on dimension. Any dimension. And, and it's after in 1969 that, that Margulis in his thesis proved the general one for not even for the geodesic flow, but for topologically mixing anus of flow. So there is Margulis in 1969 that is in his thesis. So proves MA the multiplicative asymptotic bound for topologically mixing anus of flow. So, um, so I'm just showing this word, but for those of you who don't know about anus of flow is just, so the, the, the one nice example of anus of flows are uh, geodesic flow in negative curvature. They have, they have this nice property of being anus of. So in particular, it, it improved the results of, of Sinai, which was UB. And also this also was, uh, was generalized by Parry and Polycott in 83 for axiom A flows. So Parry and Polycott, 1983 for axiom A flows. And yeah, so, but you see that all these, all these results that I listed, they kind of use what we call the uniform hyperbolicity of, 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 of the system. Like you have uniform hyperbolicity, which just means that you have a nice splitting of your tangent space into stable and unstable that are contracting and expanding uniformly. And so these are some problems that we are facing in the non-conjugate point. Already in non-positive curvature, you have this problem that you don't have uniform hyperbolicity. So, and, and beyond negative curvature, actually there is a result of Catox. So it's just, let me just list a few more, a couple of more. So beyond negative curvature. So there is this results by Katok who proves the exponential growth for sumo flows with positive topological entropy and no fixed point. So nineteen eighty-two. So smooth flow and H positive, positive topological entropy and no fixed point. This gives the exponential growth, like the, uh, the, uh, the number of closed geodesics, they grow like the entropy exponentially. Right, and then, and then actually last year, there is a result that by Lima, Yuri Lima and Omri Sarig, 2019. And they give now the, the, the uniform bound, they, they improve Scatox results to give actually the uniform bound for three-dimensional flow with positive topological entropy, 3D flow with positive topological entropy. Okay, I should just write H. H positive. 
And also in the setting of, of negative curvature, there is another result of Knipper that proves uh, the proof that proved the, the exponential growth. So Knipper. in 1983 gives the for non-positive curvature and rank one so this gives the exponential growth so so this is um mostly what what is known in terms of dynamics also in terms of in terms of Riemannian. There are other results that do other settings, but um, I'm not gonna talk about them. And actually I should say that there is a very rec recent result by Russell Ricks, Ricks in 2019. Actually our, our method is, uses, uses a lot of techniques from, from his paper. Russell Ricks for rank one cut zero space. This is beyond the Riemannian setting. So this is rank one cut zero space. So in particular it gives it it, it recover it, it gives it gives the results for for non-positive coverage and rank one. So here he has the actual bound, the multiplicative asymptote. And uh, yeah there is a preprint for this that is on the archive. Yeah, so yeah, so I'm half away. So I will the rest of the talk I will mainly give you ideas on how to prove this multiplicative asymptotic bound. So ideas. So the proof. So this proof, it actually, it is based, so I would just list two, uh, like uh, three points maybe that are very central in the proof. And then I will tell later how they are used. So if you don't know it yet, maybe you just have to skip this and then uh, follow after what I, will, what I will say. But I will just say two, three, three points that are very essential in the proof. So one is that, the measure of maximal entropy. The measure of maximal entropy has uh, the the product structure. So, the measure of. So, if you don't know what measure of maximal entropy is, you can just skip this, and then uh, I will say some more later. Measure of maximal entropy has product structure. And another point is that the flow is mixing with respect to this measure. Then can you say a little bit what, what you mean by product structure? So no. you have the, the, the measure, you can write it as a product of two measures. So in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, so you can, you can see this as, so you, you can think of this measure being disintegrating on this stable and unstable, on this stable and unstable manifold, and you can write this measure as a product of two measures there. And if you know something about the Patterson-Sullivan measures, this is the typical measure. Actually, that's what we use here. That's that's actually the, 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 the we prove that the measure of maximum entropy is given by Patterson-Sullivan measure, which by construction has a product structure. So it's just the measure that you can write it as a product of two measure. And these two measure, they have, they have dynamical meaning, like they are associated to stable and unstable, which is not true in general. For instance, if you look at the, the, the for the geodesic flow, if you look at the Louisville measure, for instance, if you don't have in, in variable curvature, variable negative curvature, the Louisville measure is not in general like a product measure. 
So this is a this is a very 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 you know specific to the measure of maximal entropy that we use here. That was also used in the original proof in the Margulis. And this you have to prove in your case. This is not. Yeah, yeah. We have to we have to prove that we have to prove that the measure of maximal entropy is built in a way that it has a product structure. And then the other point is that the flow is mixing respect to this, the measure of maximum entropy, let's call it M. And the flow is mixing respect to this measure. So I will also say later what mixing is if you don't know it. So the geodesic flow is mixing. With respect to M. So this is also something we have to prove. We, we had it in our, in, our first, in our first joint paper with uh, Klimanaga and Thompson. We proved uh, these two properties, like the measure of maximum entropy has a product structure and the geodesic flow is mixing respect to it. And then the third property is some type of equity distribution of closed geodesics. So I will also say explicitly what I mean by this. A key distribution of closed geodesics. So this is um, roughly saying that if I if I take a measure that is supported along these closed geodesics of length t, if I if I take the limit when t goes to infinity, I'm going to get the measure of maximum entropy. Basically, these three properties they are the main ingredient of the proof. Okay, so I will now move to more specific on how to how to prove this. So we're going to count. So just some notation. I will denote by M tilde is a universal cover. So universal cover. Universal cover. And then um, the, the, the first fundamental group I denoted by gamma. So gamma is the first fundamental group and it is known to be isomorphic to the group of isometries of m tilde so this is very standard and so the first step of this proof is to i mean the, what i'm what i'm going to say is so this is just using the this proof is using the main ingredient that that we that people know in the Margulis in the Margulis asymptote proof. So, which is you find this this box that is foliated by stable and unstable, and then you you use this box as what what people, some people call a detector that you detect the number of closed geodesics of a certain length that are that are going through this box and then and then you use mixing and 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 an equi distribution to have the bound so that's the rough very rough thing of about margulus so the first step here the first difficulty would be to find this margulus box this 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 detector that is foliated by stable and unstable so first of all you want uh, okay i will draw it here directly so First of all, you want this kind of a box here. Let's say B. And then you want to know the number of closed geodesics through this set. So let's say B. So what happened here is from B, you can define, you can find there is a what we do is we find a nice bijection, I mean, almost a bijection between the, okay, so I should be more. So here I have this box B and I'm looking at the number of closed geodesic through B of lengths less than T. And then there is now I want to relate this set to the to a subset of the group of isometries. So what I'm basically 
saying is that there's a, almost an isometry between this set and gamma t, which is a set of gamma in gamma, oops, says that you have, this is, for some people who know more than me about dynamic, this is kind of a closing lemma. So, B gamma star phi, so phi minus T B is not empty. So phi T is a geodesic flow, okay? Geodesic flow. This is a geodesic flow. Um, and see that, okay, I'm taking B in the manifold, but think of it as lifted in the universal cover, and then you have gamma that is acting on the universal cover, the, the elements of isometries, okay? So there is a nice bijection between the number of closed geodesics that are going through this set B. Oh, so what I did not say is how to construct this set B. Maybe after, if I have some more time, I can come back to it and tell you how this is constructed. But this, this was a, like a main difficulty uh, here, like to construct this set B, this detector that Margulis has in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in his proof. And then, so, so see that if you have a, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to tell you roughly why there is a bijection between these two, these two sets. The number of closed geodetic that is going through a set B, through this set B, and then, and then, and then the, this subset of isometry elements. So see that if you have a closed geodesic, so given closed geodesic C, so, so every closed geodesic, you have, a, you have an element that is invariant by this. So this, there exists invariant, there is gamma in gamma says that gamma of C equals C. Like there's an element in the isometric group that lives in variant this C for, for it being closed. So you have every closed geodesics will, will correspond to an element here because if you see, if the geodesics go through B, you will see that here, if the element go through B, so this guy will come back to B. For instance, if this is C, you flow it by C, it's a closed geodesics, you apply the isometry, it will bring it back to the set C. So this, this way is kind of easy. What, what requires a proof is the other way, like which is more like proving a closing lemma in this setting. And the proof is kind of, uh, it's not very difficult actually. Let me just say a few words about that. So, so, meaning that if I have an element here in this set gamma t, how to find a closed geodesic? So, what you have to know is that if I have here the usual compactification of my universal cover, which you can do again here in non-conjugate points, there is a there is a way to do it. There is a uh, yeah, there is a, a, a nice way to define um, the boundary as a topological. Uh, manifold by uh, Eberlein by just taking the geodesics that are asymptotic to each other. And then, so think of my set B being somewhere here, okay? This is B that I'm detecting. So if I take a gamma in, in that set, I said, that means that this gamma, if you take it, you flow this set by the, by the geodesic flow, it comes here, let's say this is phi minus T B, and then gamma will bring it back and it will intersect. So this is gamma star phi minus T B. So basically what I'm saying is that you would, you would see that, so this set B, you can project it to the boundary and it defines to you two subsets here. And these two subsets, they will be invariant by, by gamma here. So, the, so you can have here, this guy, this interval here, let's call it C minus and then C plus. So you will see that this gamma applied to gamma at C minus will be in C minus and gamma minus one in C plus will be in C plus again, oops, subset. 
and this you would find a fixed point in the boundary and this fixed point you can find the geodesics joining them and that geodesics will be fixed by the by the by this gamma and that gives you the close so find fixed point in the boundary so you have two points psi and eta that are here psi and eta that are here that are fixed and then you can join these two points by 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 geodesics so and the geodesic the geodesic joining xi to eta is invariant under, under this gamma, is invariant under gamma, and therefore it descends to a closed geodesics downstairs in the, in the manifold, and then you have a, so this is a closing lemma that we use here. And then another ingredient that we need now, so, we are relating the number of closed geodesics through this detector with some elements of the of the of the fundamental group, a subset of the fundamental group that is defined like that. Now, if you take let nu t be the the distribution along the distribution. So I'm just taking here distribution along closed geodesic of lengths at least t. So this is saying that I'm just averaging along this closed geodesic and, and find this measure nu t. And the, the, the bijection that I said before, so the previous bijection gives you that the measure of, of this detector B is of order of the cardinality of gamma T over the cardinality of CT. So I'm putting here some bounds. So this epsilon is the tick the thickness of B in the flow direction. So see that here, the set B, it has certain thickness in the flow direction. So you take stable and stable and you flow it. So this, this, is, um, this is epsilon here, this size here is epsilon, okay. So, so this gives you this bound easily from the, from the, from the, what I said before, from the bijection that you have. So this hasn't used the ingredient that I was telling, but it will use it later in a sense that you have. So now we, we use mixing to measure the components. Uh, no, sorry. Before we use the, the product structure of the measure. So the, really the way that it is given by Patterson Sullivan measures, the product structure, the product structure to see that these sets, so this, the measure of B intersect with gamma star phi minus TB. These are the, the components of the set I was having before. This guy will be roughly exponential of minus h t so this is uh, this has to do with the construction of the measure given by the patterson sullivan it's not uh, very difficult it uses a trick that that russell ricks has in his paper to measure these components these sets times the measure of b so remember here the measure is the measure of maximum entropy m is the measure of maximum entropy so if you see i'm trying to measure these components here so I'm trying to measure, I'm trying to measure these components here. Okay, and these components, the, the measure times the cardinality should give you the total measure. And then, yeah, this is something, I won't go into details on this. And then there is uh, the mixing part of the measure. So. This is very crucial and this uses the product structure. This is what I just wrote here. It uses the product structure of the measure 
and I, it basically it uses the fact that the measure is given by the partisan Sullivan construction, which is which has a product structure. And then we use mixing. Oops. Here we use mixing. to have that the measure of B intersect with phi minus TB. This guy is converging to the measure of B square. So as I said, what I'm, what I'm sketching here is, is, I mean, this is very sketchy. Already in the paper, if you, if you, if, if you have a look in, the, in our preprint, there is a main technicality that I'm not saying here that is due to here, we cannot do the exact marvelous B and B. In the paper, we need, the, for some technicality, we need to use a, a subset that is much smaller here, but just for the presentation here, I'm using B and B, okay? So this is just the mixing. This is a, like, you can take this as definition of mixing of a measure. So the measure is this, we prove it in a previous preprint. And then, and, and now if you have this mixing property, this gives you now that if you, if you couple this with, with the, the inequality I have above, this gives you, okay. Okay, so this would imply that the cardinality of gamma T goes like EHT times the measure of B. Right, because previously I have the I have the other bound which is here. Oops, where is that? So from from this step, I can bound the 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 measure of the measure. So these are the measures of the components. So I should have written something before. Let me just let me just erase this and write one more line before I say this. So from here, you can have that the measure of this full set measure of, of B intersect with phi minus T B. This goes like the cardinality of gamma T times E H minus H T times the measure of B, right? Because these are just one components and, and these are disjoint, okay? For different gamma, we choose B small so that for different gamma, we have uh, their disjoint. So the measure is just the union, the sum of the measures. So, and, and this implies what I raised before that the number of these elements is like E H T times the measure of B because you use mixing here and you use this bound, this two, yeah, from this two, you, you, have, you have this. So this so far, I have used the product structure and the mixing property of the measure. And then the last, the last bit is to use equidistribution. For instance, to say that this quantity that I have here, this measure here, equidistribution implies that this measure is converging to the measure of maximum entropy, this measure. So when T goes to infinity, this is like MB. Okay, this is MB and this will be epsilon over T times this. So now we use equidistribution. Equidistribution. Equidistribution to have that the number of PT is like epsilon over T times the cardinality. So this was just from this, from this definition here. Okay, because this is converging to the measure. So this is, what, why did I say C? It should be PT, sorry. This should be P. Okay. And then, yeah. And you use the previous bound that you have in the in the in the cardinality. So this is very sketchy again. This is not like a 
rigorous proof, but it just gives you the ideas of the main ingredient that we use here. Uh, and one thing that I'm hiding, I did not say is the construction of B, which is a bit technical, but I don't think there would be time to say it. But so uh, this is a like approximation. So this will be epsilon. like epsilon e h t over t and from here to the to the to the final we just do an integration because here we are looking at at, at closed geodesics that are going through b and and then we we do an integration to get that to get that down the number of guys that are in the in my full manifold is h t over h t so this is basically the main ingredients in the proof here so one thing I said I am hiding, I did not say is like the construction of this set B. It's not very trivial because you don't have transversality between stable and unstable manifold, but you need to we use um, like the Hopf map that is defining the boundary to define this set. Yeah, so I think I will stop here and I'm open for questions. Thank you, Gadeem. <laughs> Thanks, Karim, for your talk. So, are there any questions? You can now unmute your microphones, or if you want to write it on the chat, and I can also read them. Please go ahead. Well, I, I had actually very general questions, so I don't know. Maybe you want to answer. It's uh, it's uh, maybe the other people have more specific questions because when we're discussing at some point, you talked about how these kind of counting results have relevance to other areas of mathematics except can you yeah. say something about the motivation for these results and what are the well, i don't actually i don't know the the precise the precise maybe some people in the audience who know this more than me should know but um, i just know it has to do with um, this uh, it, it can give the i mean this uh, prime number theorem like the it is a prime number theorem that's in number theory, but the, the way we use it is the way it's, it's very different. This is just going through dynamics, but already that prime number theorem, you can have it from the negative curvature, from the constant negative curvature one, but it's, it's, it's related. And yeah, it has also relation with zeta function, but I don't know very much about this. So uh, yeah. And how much of a restriction is this? not having conjugate points is that a very general condition or is it something yeah i think that's the that's um that's the very uh, that's very general i think that's the um so does it not that, hold does the results not hold if you have conjugate points it's a very degenerate situation or no, it's not known for instance you you have you have flow with conjugate points that have positive topological entropy. So you have this uniform bound by Sarik, but the exact asymptote is not known. It's not known if, yeah, if it's true, but you can have, you have the, the uniform bound if you just have positive entropy. No, are there any other questions? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. In the first theorem you have stated, what's the problem that happens with the torus? Why the genus is at least two? What happens in genus one? Yeah, for instance, if, 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 if you have genus one, so you just have two. Uh, the, if you have genus one without conjugate points, it is flat. So you just have uh -huh. two orbits. Uh -huh, okay. It is flat, so, and uh, yeah. And everything I'm talking about, it should be, it should have positive entropy and uh, the flat torus have zero topological entropy. And yeah, you just have two close orbit if, if, the, if, if you are in the flat torus. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So, if not, we can thank Karim again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Gavin.